Uh, guests, welcome to the 2024 edition of the European Tree of the Year Award Ceremony. We are glad to see all of you, supporters of the trees, tree lovers, tree admirers, tree huggers, here at the Yehudin Menuhin Amphitheater at the European uh, uh, Parliament. My name is Elena Lichner-Marinovska. I will be accompanying you here and co-hosting together with Adam throughout this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Adam Holop. Uh, you can notice that I am not Natalie Powells. Greetings to those uh, that are online also. Uh, the European Tree of the Year is back and with it the stories of the trees and the communities living around them. Those who have followed us uh, before will be wondering why are you seeing two new faces instead of the traditional host, Mr. Ladislav Miko and Ms. Natalie Powells. But to tell you the truth, both are at very adventurous places at the moment. Ladislav Miko is in the depths of the Amazon from where he is sending you his greetings. And Natalie Powells is currently preparing for a trial -out. I leave it up to you to decide which one of the two is a more dangerous place and dangerous endeavor. However, we do have enough special people around us anyway. And before we let those speak and hear from them, I would like you to join me in listening to a pre-recorded message of one of the patrons of this evening. Where would we be without the trees? They clean the air and feed the clouds. They keep soils healthy and they are essential for our climate. And we are learning more and more about the vital role we play in protecting human health. For all these reasons, European Tree of the Year is a wonderfully symbolic event. It's a reminder of how indispensable our trees have always been. That's been true for centuries, but right now, it's more important than ever before. With global warming and biodiversity loss, we face two huge challenges, and trees are an essential part of the solution. In the majestic forest, leafy avenues, or standing alone in a the field, they are part of the beauty of our landscape. And as this award shows so, a tree can also have immense cultural value for a local community, because Today isn't just about trees, it's also about communities. Communities and the vital role they play in securing the well-being of future generations. Planting trees, growing trees, nurturing trees is an excellent way to engage citizens. It means we can all take part in a tangible action to improve our planet. The European Commission has set itself an ambitious challenge promoting the planting of 3 billion additional trees by the end of this decade. I know that several communities represented at this event have already taken part. Many thanks for that and for encouraging others to do the same. It's also given me an opportunity to engage with local communities here in Brussels and get closer to them because we are not distant from local communities. Very often we are with you on the ground. Planting new trees is important, but so is looking after what we have for their natural value, for the carbon they stock, and as we are seeing today, for the cultural values they embody. So thank you once again for this excellent initiative, which speaks to so many hearts. And long live the European Tree of the Year. Now let us sink in the wise words of Commissioner Sienkiewicz. And Allow me to, uh, to invite on stage uh, the first guest uh, of tonight. And uh, I'm just wondering who could be better equipped to tell us about the importance of communities in caring for the nature around them than Director General Madame Florica Finhoyer of DG Environment. Please, welcome. Good evening, and um, I'm very honored to be here. Um, this competition of European Tree of the Year really highlights the significance of old trees, of 
the trees that also speak and are part of our cultural heritage and therefore they deserve our care and our protection and i don't know whether you have seen around there there are the the ones who are in the competition all of them are magnificent trees very beautiful and that's why this is and here on this side as well of course <laughs> on both sides and this is why this is such a positive event uh this is about celebrating trees celebrating nature but in a positive way i was just talking because we had several trees event uh, today but sometimes a single tree can speak much more to a person or to a population than perhaps um, a whole forest so that's extremely important trees are multitaskers i know you know all of this but let me really say it they regulate the climate they're protecting the soils they're cycling the water and they produce oxygen and they cool our cities when they are in the urban area planted they filter they are the air and they are vital for biodiversity and they do give farmers and land owners and foresters an income and after all they give us recreation all of us and we all share it trees and as i said they speak to our heart and they are essential part of our culture actually of our cultural heritage i think there's not a single country where you don't find a specific tree either as a national symbol or something that has been receiving a special status and especially these old trees which are here for much more longer than us and they also make us sometimes quite humble when you sometimes stand in front of a big tree you say like Oh my god what has this tree already seen what have they heard or not and they speak to us and this is really the living memory that we also have as local communities often and in these campaigns there's this one that are special because they raise awareness of the importance of trees and we are truly truly grateful from both the di uh, director general of climate and uh, environment they are symbols symbols for us to pledge the eu pledge to protect old growth forests because that's not such a given um with this competition we really raise awareness to this old growth forest and the value they present we have the 2000 network you all know that actually even here in uh, in belgium we have the forest last one year which is also part of it and under the natura 2000 network we have roughly 40% of uh, the um, forest on the old precious and vulnerable forests that are in. But in general, under well, we have 40% of forest in Natura 2000, but in total, only 3% of the total forest in Europe are part of Natura 2000. So I think the, the balance is quite okay. Nevertheless, some of the old trees are felt, and that is why it is so important that um, new renewable energy directive which you all knew has been adopted now uh, excludes uh, excludes primary and old growth forest from being uh, a forest type that can be locked and felt for bioeconomy and we also have the cascading principle here in, in, in these are very great achievements which we should cherish because they help us to preserve these specific uh, forests and we also had um, specific guidelines uh, providing also common definitions uh, and the mapping and the protection of all those forests. These were not only coming from us, they were also agreed with member states. And we had also a recent proposal coming out on the monitoring framework for forests. You might have heard about it. It will also land with the parliament. We are already discussing it, but it will probably see the light more in the trilogue in the, uh, in the next uh, minute. But um, it's very important because when we monitor, we know what we have to cherish. We also know when there might be pest. We might be knowing when there is a degradation so that we can act before it spreads. And we can also see what we do, especially from climate neutrality point of view, do they really still act as carbon sinks? Are they healthy enough? So this monitoring is a service to member states in order to have some overview because forests are interconnected. We have no borders on that. Um, and then, most of you know, we also are in the final stretches for the nature restoration law, which also is addressing all ecosystems, including forests. And they 
forests under the nature restoration law really largely contribute to uh, more biodiversity, but actually also to more climate neutrality because also to work on disaster risk management and prevention. I think then when you think about the cycles and the, the interconnection between biodiversity, climate change, pollution, but also extreme weather events, and then, uh, the beauty of the forest or a tree to act against it is, is very, very strong. So we hope that it will be uh, adopted in the council nevertheless on Monday, but it's not so clear. But it aims actually precisely on rejuvenating our forests and it making them resilient, more biodiverse, and beneficial for both planet and, and people. And the idea is always to speak about a triangle. We have to go on different um, interests and get that right triangle right. It is an economic uh, um, interest, it is social interest, and it is um, biodiversity and nature interest or environmental interest. Because if you get the foundation on the uh, on the resource front, you have the foundation also for economy and therefore also for well-being. So it is a triangle we have to look on very, very careful. Some of you were at the uh, three billion tree uh, planting uh, event that my own department was launching. This uh, not launching or relaunching or rebringing back to the uh, attention this afternoon, I know some of you, I see them here in the audience. And this was about planting trees at the right place and the right tree, but also for the right purpose in order to really increase um, resilience building and, and, and biodiversity. Um, today is a very large conference and we are very happy to see that in particular here we have um, environmental partnership. You're the one behind everything here. But you were also top of our list in the um, counter for the three billion uh, tree planting. So you're really a star, and I really thank you heartfully from all my heart for doing so. Really great performance and outstanding performance. Actually, I think looking at the future of our forest, which are illustrated in some of these trees, a shared vision, and it is for the future generations. I think at it and we have to really look at the border to others. Back to the contest now, um, the award highlights the importance of nature conservation and restoration, but also the specific value, as I said, illustrated in one tree. This European Tree of the Year is a public vote and that's why it generates also interest. It encourages public engagement and that is very good to celebrate the importance the tree and the stories behind them. Because if you go and look at that, these stories and these stories speak to people, they speak to us and they remind us and they are an encouragement to do what we have to do. So I hope that this award ceremony brings together an environmental advocate, but also landowners, policy makers and everybody else who really profits and should profit in the future from this shared natural heritage. Enjoy the event and I hope you continue this strong competition every year because we're really good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Director General, for bringing passion, enthusiasm, energy to this room and also fingers crossed for the nature restoration of Monday. And now a reminder on the trees that are competing, we're competing uh, this year. And that, as was already said, observe you from the walls of this beautiful circular room. Let's hear the 15 stories. And by the way, did you know that for the second time in a row, we have a tree from Ukraine competing in this competition as well? Did yes, you know that? yes. And this uh, participation of Ukraine is already becoming a good tradition. Another piece of very good news is that we have seen a return of the contest also in Lithuania. That's right. Well, the special greetings go to all the national organizers who are here tonight, but also those that couldn't be here and watch, watch us, along with all the followers and supporters who join us every year. Communities of trees, communities, trees, and communities. Stories. 
please open your hearts, open your minds, open your eyes, open your ears, because now we will listen to the 15 stories. Ladies and gentlemen, let's present the 15 finalists of the European Tree of the Year 2024 competition. An oak that remembers the Palfi family, Slovakia. The Palfi oak is one of the last trees that began to write its story before the arrival of the Palfi family in Maliki. All you have to do is slow down and the old tree will tell you stories about noble family, wars, old loves, and It is one of the oldest located in the grounds of the National Cultural Monument Castle Park. It, along with trees located in the immediate vicinity of Manor, make up the composition of the park, which forms a wild forest. Camelia, Portugal. Multi-secular, located in Guimarães, within the centennial gardens of the ancient Villa Margariti, 10th century, integrated into a historical garden exemplifying the art of topiary with high aesthetic and biological value. It stands out for centuries of careful shaping that have resulted in a monumental creation of volumes, colors, and geometrical shapes. A magnificent example of the symbiosis between nature and human. It is listed as national heritage since 2022 and was elected Tree of the Year in Guimarães in 2021. Kanepju Oak, Latvia. Kanepju Oak, the second largest oak in Latvia and the Baltics, the pride and symbol of the local community, with people choosing to mark special moments under the oak's crown. The trunk of the oak was once split in half by lightning, leaving a large cavity in the middle of it. Various names and initials have been carved on it, the oldest dating back to 1886. In 1933, Atputa, the most popular magazine in Latvia at the time, announced a competition for the mightiest oak. Kanepju oak came first. Lithuania's patriarch tree, Lithuania. The horse chestnut growing in the homestead of Jonas Vasanovicius, known as the patriarch of the nation, is the only authentic object surviving World War II, reminiscent of his lifetime. In the past, people used to gather under its branches to express their national beliefs and patriotism. Even if it was punishable in the occupied country, they used to decorate the branches of the tree by national flags and woven bands. Today, museum visitors lean against it to experience the patriarch spirit. Pear tree in the middle of a field, Czech Republic. The memorial pear tree is not very large, measuring about two meters around the trunk and eight meters in height. However, it is extremely resilient and brave. It survived collectivization in the times of former Czechoslovakia, the consolidation of fields, the construction of land reclamation and unprofessional interventions in the surrounding landscape. Its unusual shape reflects the strong winds that most often blow from the west in this region, as well as its lonely location in the middle of a field. The Cedar of the Saint Marie College, Belgium. Anyone who has passed by this school or enters the city will be familiar with this majestic tree. It shapes the landscape and creates a reassuring link between nature and the city. A cedar here, sometimes considered the sacred tree of the gods, sometimes a symbol of fertility, peace, and harmony, a remarkable symbol chosen by the Marists. Today, with a height of 28 a spread of 27 meters and a trunk with a circumference of 470 centimeters, it is one of the largest cedars in Belgium. This cedar, the emblem of the school, is one of the most beautiful trees in our region. The Green Lady of the Kurka National Park, Croatia. It is not known who planted the mulberry tree that has been standing for generations on the right bank of the river under the remains of the Boudin Mill but it is a symbol of the silken past and sweet present of this region. It is estimated that the white mulberry tree is about 400 years old and has a trunk circumference of 475 centimeters. It is part of our tradition and a recognizable image of our landscape. Trees, as a manifestation of life itself, have always been strongly connected with man. 
This is how our old mulberry tree today provides shade and shelter to new generations. The heart of the garden, whole lift. This monumental tree grows in the center of an old park. Its majestic appearance impresses us with its unusually shaped and thick trunk, widely spread at branches and purple colored leaves that shine beautifully in the sun. The heart of the garden is living proof of an old park's historic turmoil and dominates over the arboretum situated around it. Upon a shadow of its great widely spreaded crown, enthusiasts still meet just like 100 or 200 years ago, united by their admiration of nature. The Maria Lime, Netherlands. First officially mentioned in 1388, the Maria Lime tree in Oysterwijk, aka the Old Lime, is likely more than 650 years old. Her life is intertwined with many generations of inhabitants. Underneath her impressive crown, justice was served and town meetings were held. It was said she could shelter up a lot of people. The Maria Lime Tree saw numerous markets, weddings, and city festivities. During the 1800s, she nearly died but formed a new trunk, still loved by all. The Millennium Oak, Ukraine. The Millennium Oak, the oldest tree of the Lviv region, which took root on the territory of the local church of Michael in the village of Baron. In 1984, the old oak was given the status of a botanical monument. The tree has several hollows, one of which is so large that it resembles a cave. There is a legend that during the Second World War, a sniper sat in the hollow and prevented the crossing of the Dniester River from being established. In 1917, there was a school of Ukrainian Sish Riflemen in Varin. The soldiers immortalized the old tree in a photo, which was later used as an image for a postcard. The Spanish Oak of La Vega, Spain. El Chaparro de La Vega, with around 400 years old, has a size extraordinary. Over 12 meters tall, its trunk has a circumference of over 4 meters. The crown has a diameter of over 28 meters, and the projection of its shadow is around 580 square meters, where it holds the record for the largest number of people under its canopy, a total of 2,000 people. It is in an exceptional state of preservation. This is largely due to the people of Corib, who have looked after it for generations. Every May, La Romeria, in honor of La Virgen de la Fatima, is built near the tree. The thousand-year-old olive tree of Luras, Italy. The thousand-year-old olive tree of Luras is a natural wonder that fascinates and amazes with its grandeur and beauty. Located in the small town of Luras in Sardinia, this centuries-old tree is considered one of the oldest specimens of wild olive on the island. He is defined as the patriarch of nature for the wisdom of his age, estimated to be between 3,000 and 4,000 years old. The tree has a robust and resistant structure, which testifies to its longevity, a true symbol of resilience and continuity. The Viralts Oak, Estonia. Viralts Oak, named after well-known Estonian graphic artist Eduard Viralts 1943 engraving, stands proudly in Estonia's Viljandi area. This 13 meter tall tree, also known as Tama Kuri Tam, holds historical intrigue. Legend has it that the King of Sweden personally planted it from a broken log, promising a return of Swedish power to Estonia. Despite landscape changes, the oak remains robust with a 550 centimeter circumference commemorated on a silver coin for Estonia's 90th anniversary. This iconic tree embodies cultural and historical significance a must-see for art enthusiasts and those exploring Estonia's rich heritage. The Weeping Beach of Bayeux, France. The Beach of Bayeux is a rare French natural monument, becoming as famous as Bayeux Tapestry in Normandy. Popular for his immense weeping canopy and massive twisted branches, probably related to their bow, he is a perfect romantic spot for celebrations and weddings. Spreading over 40 meters width today, the city had to keep on perfecting an incredible supporting structure for the last 100 years. Ongoing care and love for the tree also shown in emails he gets 
are his best protection for the future. Wrexham's Acton Park Sweet Chestnut, United Kingdom. The national contest celebrated urban trees in our neighborhoods, each one a locally loved ancient or veteran tree fascinating story and incredible benefits for wildlife, communities, and the environment. Wrexham's Sweet Chestnut won the national contest. Thought to be almost 500 years old, this giant tree is a symbol of resilience in the city, having weathered challenges from post-war plundering of the park for firewood in the 40s to dozens of deadly storms. The tree celebrated and loved by locals for its beauty and history, and often the centerpiece for picnics and tree parties. So these were the candidates. Majestic, impressive, soothing, resilient, beautiful, protected, loved, valued. And we should actually also pay tribute to the generations of ancestors who have been protecting these beautiful trees. Now the questions are very simple. Whose story has gained most of hearts through the public vote? So who can with the wooden statue? Well, personally, I think they all deserve a recognition and Quite rightly, it's been already said a few times, you can give that recognition by checking out the exhibition of both sides of this magnificent hall. Get yourself, allow yourself to be inspired. Feel invited to admire the story, read it, think about it a little bit, read it again perhaps. But I somehow just really can't wait to find out who got the main award this year. Be patient. Before we uh, go and find out about the winners, I would like to uh, invite the organizers to the stage. And here, please welcome Mr. Miroslav Kundrata, the Development Director of the Czech Environmental Partnership Foundation. Good evening. Thank you very much that you came to, to celebrate with us the, not only the venues, but all, all the trees which were nominated. Uh, I think everything was said by, by Mrs. Director, by, by the Commissioner, I do not want to, uh, to repeat. But what is important, the European Tree of, year, of the Year is here 23 years. It's not 1,000 years, like <laughs> some trees on, on the screen, but it, it's something. And it, it, it is possible, thanks to the national organizers in all uh, countries which are involved, and, and uh, not only organizers, but especially those communities who nominated their trees and who did their campaign, who, who did this awareness, which is so, so important for, for us. So I would like to thank them all and uh, without them it would not be possible uh, and the last thing i want to want to emphasize and hi highlight it was already mentioned uh, we have ukraine on the board uh, since last year and we believe that with uh, involving the ukrainian civil society we will we will have help them to uh, to, uh, to be successful in this conflict and um, and end it and start recovering the country soon. So thank you very much for support. Thank you very much for your messages, Mr. Kundrata. And I would like also to thank uh, Katarzyna Bolechkova, where is she? Up there. For the organization of the contest, there is always there are always many people behind organizing such a such an event. So also a big applause to her, please. Well, that is very true indeed. And now, please let's welcome Dr. Jurgen, Secretary General of the European Land Owners Organization.
Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special relationship with trees. That's partly because of my family name, and I'm Belgian, and I'm living in the Dutch part of Belgium. The name means French. And when 30 years ago, my eldest daughter was born, we were sending out broadcasts, and we had a text. Now she's still a small little branch, but later on, she will be a dream of a tree. Today she's 30, and she became that dream of a tree. And in the meantime, she has a little branch running around. But that makes that I'm becoming the old tree and the storyteller. And that is exactly what this contest is all about. The tree as a storyteller. Because the tree is giving us so much information about the past. Let's say if we go and have a look inside the tree, we can, we can measure carbon and how it evolved in the, in the past centuries. We can have a look whether the weather was fine, how the temperature was. So we have a data bank of state scientific information in each and every tree. So really a storyteller of the environment, a storyteller of what happened in, in history. And if I say that's exactly what this contest is about, we are not looking for the biggest tree. We are not looking for the nicest tree. We are looking for a specific tree with a link with the local community, with the country, a tree with a story. A story which is important for that local community, but which is also showing the link between communities and nature. And in that way, each and every of those trees are becoming, I would say, a symbol of sustainability, because the tree is having an aspect of ecology, of economy, and of social aspects related to that tree. And that is exactly why we as European landowners are very happy that we can co organize uh, this uh, Tree of the Year contest on a yearly basis. Because the tree is a little bit like our members. Our members, let's say, who are linked to their land, and quite often are staying on the land over several generations, just as that tree. And the way that many of our members of became storytellers of their estates, of their land, let's say at the same time, that tree is becoming that storyteller. And so if we are celebrating trees, we are also celebrating landowners, we are celebrating farmers, we are celebrating foresters, we are celebrating local communities. And that is exactly what we are trying to do this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jürgen, and thank you for your words and also for the support of the landowners uh, to the contest. And now, finally, now, finally, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to see what tree got the third place. To find that out, please. Let's welcome Mr. Ladislav Kuchera, director of the Škoda Endowment Fund, Mr. Petr Springingsfeld of the South Moravian Regional Council, and Mr. Michal Slezák, head of national programs at the State Environmental Fund of the Czech Republic. So, ladies and gentlemen, the third place goes to the thousand-year-old olive, Italy. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, the representatives of the community here with us today, but symbolically on their behalf, Mr. Daniel Monteleone of the landowners, uh, Italian himself, will accept symbolically the award.
Moving to the second place, and here the second place will be awarded by Mr. Jürgen Tak, Mr. Branch, and Mr. Uh, Miroslav Kondrata, representing the organizers. my class. Oh, nice. We know somebody. Uh, the second place, the Weeping Beach of the ba Bayo, Bayo, uh, from France. <laughs> Congratulations. So, um, thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Françoise Jean-Pierre, city councillor of Bayeux City, uh, is going to talk in French and I will translate for you. Thank you. Bonsoir à tous. Permettez-moi en premier lieu de bien vouloir excuser Monsieur le maire de Bayeux, Patrick Gaumont, ainsi que son premier adjoint, Arnaud Tancrel, très investi dans ce dossier qui sont en ce moment même réunis au Conseil municipal. La ville de Bayeux est très fière de compléter le podium de cette belle compétition. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Allow me, uh, first of all, to kindly apologize on behalf of Mayor of Bayeux, Patrick Gaumont, and his first deputy, Anno Tancrel, very involved in this contest, as they are currently meeting in Municipal Council. Lorsque nous nous sommes engagés dans notre concours national, nous ne connaissions même pas l'existence de ces concours européens. Alors, terminé deuxième, meilleur classement jamais atteint par notre pays, au milieu de cette très belle candidature, résonne pour nous une petite ville de 13 000 habitants comme une belle victoire. So, when um, um, city of Bayeux is a very proud to get this uh, second prize of this great competition because when we applied for the national contest we did not even know about the European round so to get this second prize the best ranking ever for our country and among um, fantastic amazing candidates it resonates like a great victory to our small town of 30,000 inhabitants vécu à travers ces deux concours. Une aventure incroyable qui nous a permis de fédérer, de faire des rencontres, de nouer des partenariats, de mettre en lumière ce bel arbre qui le mérite tant, de faire la promotion de notre belle ville de Bayeux. Joyeux, architectural, première ville libérée de France et de porter la noble cause de la défense des arbres. We will remember the magnificent collective adventure experienced through both contests. It's been an incredible adventure for uniting people and bonding partnerships, highlighting this beautiful tree which deserves it so much. And to promote our beautiful city, architectural treasure, and first liberated city in the country in World War II. Et puisque nous avons la chance de posséder deux arbres remarquables de France, et de compter sur un bel arbre de la liberté planté à la Révolution française, vous entendrez peut-être à nouveau parler de Bayeux dans les années à venir. And uh, we carry, uh, the Bayeux carry, carries the noble cause of defending trees, and um, the city is very lucky to have two other labelized remarkable trees, and uh, to also have a beautiful tree of liberty planted during the French Revolution, So we would like to promote it also, and you may hear about bio trees again in the years to come. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Um, I would say a word. I'm uh, uh, from Arbre, the national NGO uh, running uh, the European uh, round of the uh, tree of the year, France. And um, we are very, very happy because it's a very special tree. We are here every year since the beginning. And what it's not, uh, you know, whatever the rank, it's participating, it's gathering all together for these fantastic trees. We call them natural and natural heritage. It's really a mix of, of two, the two. And uh, the Bayeux uh, tree is really an exceptional tree, uh, long exceptional trees, I must say. And to us, it's cherry on the cake because it's 30 years of our NGO. So it's like, you know, a special gift the European public, the organizer of this fantastic contest on the host. Thank you so much. We here today and we celebrate it very much in our heart. Thank you. Merci à tous. Merci. Well, and finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. Please allow me to invite our parliamentarian patrons, uh, MEP Ludwig Niedermeyer and MEP Michal Wiesik, to announce the European Tree of the Year 2024 contest winner. <clears throat> Uh, I guess today everyone is here a winner, but it's still good to know who is the winner. So, yes, that's true. And I'm, I think that I speak for both of us that we are very happy that this is already a 23rd anniversary of this, of this beautiful contest. Uh, and it's quite impressive that we were able or, or, or that we are a part of this, of this uh, well, enterprise. But at the same time, if you translate the 23 years into the increments of these trees, they probably haven't even changed in, 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 in that, in that uh, time period. So it's, it's very relative in, in this regard. Um, I also would like to stress that we would be super happy if we could award all the contestants, because all those contest trees were, were magnificent. And we also acknowledge all the people that are trying desperately to protect them and really spread the idea of protecting these beautiful trees to the public. This is super important also for us as the decision makers. And I'm also very happy that we were not responsible for picking the winner, because that would be a desperate task for us. And we would be very unhappy uh, of being responsible for picking the one. So if someone is to blame for the picking of the winner, I'm speaking, also, of course, not, not seriously. It's the public, so it's a democratic decision. And the winner can be only one. And, and who is that? Who is it? Okay, okay. good choice, I think. Uh, the heart of the garden from Poland. Congratulations. Please let me invite the representatives of the community, Mr. Zygmunt Kanski and Mr. Tomasz Dimny, on stage. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are more than happy. <laughs> really, it's something amazing for us. Uh, our beach, Fagus Sylvatica Atropurpura, is a winner. Wow! We are 
actually we were expecting. Therefore, we applied to this competition. It's really a very nice tree with, tree with long history, beautiful, also showing us, as the name, heart of the garden. They always want to live and show how life is important, how important is also nature for us. But let me say something uh, uh, for the organizers. It's really a wonderful idea, this competition. It should be really very well developed and spread over the Europe because trees are very important for everyone. They are the best friend of people. Everything we deserve from, from trees, wood, food, energy, everything, oxygen, as was told. So, I am really very, I want to say a huge gratitude for the organizers, of course, from the European Union Commission, but also from the National uh, Club Gaia, Jacek and Yola. They worked very hard to convince people to nominate some nice, beautiful trees in this nice competition. So, let me tell you something about this beautiful beach. It's 200 years old. It really is the, has the witness of the history of this place. If you can speak, he, will, he can tell us a lot happened in this place because we are on Lower Silesia. The histories are very difficult there. The people move from the east to the west. It was very, some sad story, but also very nice story. But now, this tree is growing in the heart of the garden. Therefore, the name is so nice. In the garden, which is one of the beautiful in, the, in Poland. So, let's close your eyes and imagine 62 hectares of arboretum. It's not very easy, but close your eyes and imagine Eden. So, it's much easier. So, our garden looks like Eden. It's the really good example of biodiversity. High plants can be their ways, their ways. You can walk through the paths and you will be surrounded by tall trees, a lot of plants. You can smell the scent of beautiful, beautiful, very colorful plants. We have seven national collections. We have beautiful collection of rhododendron. In May, colorful, beautiful, and attract thousands of people to see. This only one type of plants. We have also nice, beautiful, and hugest collection in Poland of peonies. It's the, it's the beautiful plants. You can admire it whole day walking and looking in different places. You can find different types of peonies. We have also, we are also famous of daylilies. It probably is the biggest collection in the world, maybe in Europe for sure. But we have more than 3,000 varietas of this single beautiful genus. In May, you can admire cherry orchard. Beautiful, like in, in white color. That the flowers attract our eyes on it. But in the June, July, you can eat fruits directly from the tree. Very tasty, believe me. Many people tested it, survived. That means are very, very healthy too. So <clears throat> I think I can talk a lot of our arboretum because we have how many how many taxa? More than 3,000 3, taxa in, in, in the collection. We have a lot of endangered and rare species which we kept it, keep it uh, in ex situ uh, protection. So we have also beautiful in the autumn, nicely flowering the Dragena National Collection. Every year you can see something different. So, as we gather here to get together, let us acknowledge uh, uh, the all 
efforts people give to nature protection. It's very important now, especially now when we are in the time when climate is changing, and we, uh, we have pay attention on the species, especially on trees. Let us again express our gratitude to all people who vote in this competition uh, and support our head of the garden, but also for those one who support the other trees from different countries of Europe. All of these trees are, in our, my opinion, our opinion, winner because they are beautiful trees. So congratulations for everyone, for every tree which were nominated in this competition. So thank you very much. And, and see you in Arboretum Wojsławice, especially when the cherries are ripe. Thank you. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, and that's it. Thank you very much for being with us tonight, both in person but also online. Please join me in thanking the patrons, Commissioner Virginius Sinkevicius, MEPs Michal Viezik and Ludwig Niedermeyer for their patronage and support of the event. Many thanks also to Madame Director General, General Florica Finghoyer for her inspiring words. I personally also want to thank two special people, and that's Zuzana Laus and Katarina Homolova from the teams of the MEPs, without whom this event would not be possible. And warm thank you and acknowledgement also to the Ministry of Environment of the Czech Republic, the South Moravian Region, for the Auto Endowment Fund, uh, the Mendel University, and all partners for their support. And of course, to all national organizations from the 15 countries that have organized the national contest of the tree of the year. Thank you to all of you that have been with us in this room and of course online. So this is it. This is the end. Uh, we are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends of trees. We are here now to enjoy a bit of conversations about the trees, about the stories, about uh, about the different uh, history and please enjoy also the exhibition please spread the word of the content because we have the ambition to fill up the hemicycle of the european parliament in the future for sure and have a lovely evening <laughs>